everyone. Welcome back to RTS and welcome back to a little bit of fun. Yes, we're going to have some fun today because it's paper pad party day and we're going to play with the load prompt and we're going to get some Disney photos in. We just got a little bit of everything. And then also to guess what? This is my number 100 start to finish video. <laughs> so I wanted to do a little bit of something special because I've had some subscribers lately ask me if I could show a little bit more of my middle process in uh, some of my videos coming up over the summer and I may try to do that. I try not to uh, let my videos get too long but you know when it comes to scrapbooking does it really matter? No. So we have a little bit of everything going on so uh, kick back grab something to drink. I only have a little bit of tea left so I may have to go get a refill but that's okay. We're just going to sit and play a little bit because really I should be doing laundry and I don't feel like it. No, I need to do a laundry and I need to crack out the ironing board. I don't feel like that either. So what do I do? I come back to my scrap room. Oh yeah. Okay. So up for today in this paper pad party, we're going to be playing with Maggie Holmes, Willow Lane. So I'm going to talk about that process. And then also to the load prompt is from the May 2019 load event. And it is uh, the Cinderella <laughs> because the theme is scrapbook magic. Well, you know Cinderella had to make that. So the story prompt that Alice gave us is if, uh, if you had a fairy godmother, what dream would you have her fulfill or what dream have you had fulfilled? And then the technique prompt is to use uh, something glass-like or glossy accent on your layout or something blue like Cinderella's dress. And so I thought about that and there are um, pages I've done in the past, you know, if you could, uh, if you win the lottery, what would you do? If you had a big dream, what would you do? If What's the biggest dream you have? And I certainly, uh, since this uh, load event is about magic, I probably will do a layout about that but right now I'm not feeling that today because you know if I had a fairy godmother well you know hey <laughs> what would I ask her for well let's see that I could eat all the peanut M&Ms I ever wanted and never gained a pound or how about let's let our teachers earn what baseball players make uh, let's see if I could wipe out cancer forever <laughs> for everyone in this universe I would do that so of course you know if I had a fairy godmother I would ask for a lot of those uh, basically also a maid and a chauffeur I would ask for those <laughs> but I'm just not feeling that type of story uh, layout type of page today so I'm going to absolutely scrapbook something about Cinderella because on my last Disney trip I found something that I don't know if it's new or if it's always existed I just never found it and it was a place to go inside the castle and to take pictures of Cinderella's dresses. I mean did anybody else know that existed? I didn't and then of course I got a great shot of the fairy godmother. So as I was organizing some Disney photos lately those were in my brain. I saw that prompt. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm also going to um I'm going to do Disney. I'm going to do a two page. We're going to play with a paper pad. We're going to play with Maggie Holmes and a load prompt. I told you we have a lot going on in this paper pad party today. Yes. So take a, uh, just hit the pause button, go get something to drink and scrapbook along with me. Yes, absolutely. So, uh, how I started this and I got asked that if I could show that and then also to my middle process. So we're just going to hang out a little bit. So what I did is that I was thinking about that over a few days because that prompt was from a couple weeks ago. Okay. And so I do not have time sometimes in load events to do it every day but I certainly get to play with them it's just not on a daily basis as everyone else and that's sometimes just how life is okay so for that what I did is then I would think okay well what am I going to scrapbook and the story aspect of having a fairy godmother I just not feeling that so I thought okay I'm going to scrap these Disney photos got them out and then I started to think about well, what do I want to do and so sometimes if I um, need a starting point as far as how do I want to tell this story because I simply could just scrap book these photos okay we are going to be playing with Willow Lane so if you have that get that out and look at it as we're playing along okay so of course I have these photos here and it simply could just be about uh, Cinderella and the castle but I mean this isn't this isn't what it's about it is a little bit of basically about a fairy tale type thing okay uh, and the fairy godmother aspect that was in the load prompt so I pulled these photos of 
of what I found that day. So, I mean, just look at these. I just did not know. And I showed these uh, photos to my little one last night. And I would have loved to have been able to show her this uh, part of Disney if this existed when she was little. I'm not sure. Does anybody know? Is this something new? Um, and then also they had this display of, you know, the, the castle, the carriage, you know, at the castle, near the castle, of the carriage, you know, uh, of that whole Cinderella story. So I'm taking some that is of the castle. I'm taking some of that uh, Cinderella dress display on the some of the statue and uh, the fairy godmother, and I'm going to combine them together for my story today, uh, and that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so what I do sometimes if I need a starting point as far as the how I want to take my layout, I will go on Wikipedia or I will go on IMDb uh, for movies and shows and things like that, and I'll read a little bit of the description, and sometimes a few words will pop out. And so, of course, you know, you have one upon a time in a faraway land fairy tale Cinderella. I could use all those for a title, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this in a faraway land because I happen to up on this little place at the castle where this display was of these dresses. And I think it was basically, it was a gift shop and the, uh, I think it was a meet and greet. You could go in and get photos. So uh, that type of thing. So it might be new. And then also, you know, I asked them, because um, these were all on display. I said, can I take photos of this? And they're like, oh, sure, sure, you know. So uh, it was just a piece of magic in a faraway land that I never saw before. So I'm going to combine all of these photos that I took. And uh, you can see the most of my orientation will be four by six, but I'll talk about that in just a minute. And there, of course, up here in this little display was the little mice, too cute. And so I will... Um, I'm going to just try to find, I don't even know where this was in the castle. Honestly, I think it was around back somewhere. I was just walking around one day and happened to find it. And then, of course, you know, uh, seeing the fairy godmother. Again, just magic, 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 <laughs> which is perfect for this load prompt. Okay, so once I decided on my paper pad because I decided I wanted to do something with a little bit of a fairy tale-like look. And then, of course, in my title, In a Faraway Land, I picked out this Maggie Holmes. And I had shared this before in other videos. When I have all my photos laying here, picking up papers and supplies, I pick one photo and I go with it. And it's this one right here. Okay. Because I think for a lot of us, when we think of Cinderella, some people think of the castle. Okay. Some people think of the fairy godmother. Okay. And I have lots of pictures of the castle on this trip, but I just picked two to go with this story. Okay. And I talked about that in sorting photos and I will have that link below. Uh, so when you sort photos, you you can sort them as a category or a group or a topic or you can absolutely sort them how you may want to do a layout so there's no wrong way when it comes to sorting photos you do it the way you want to do it or as I do it a little bit of everything okay so this is the photo I'm using as my inspiration when I'm picking out papers and embellishments and thinking what I want to do all these other ones they're just coming along for the ride I pay no attention to colors and I think uh, this was uh, what I was gonna say for Cinderella, I think a lot of us have this image in our brain. <laughs> and so that's what I'm going to do. Okay. And so we'll talk more about that when I get out my catalog binder and I'm going to show you some things I may play with. Okay. So for this Maggie Holmes Willow Lane, uh, with this photo in mind, let's say, and uh, let's talk about this paper pad. Yes. Okay. So in this paper pad, you know, by Maggie Holmes, uh, you just can't go wrong with Maggie Holmes. I don't think you can go wrong with anything with Crate Paper or Echo Park or Cartabella or Pebbles or Bo Bunny. Uh, yeah, Pink Fresh. You can't go wrong with any company. No, you can't. Okay, so I'm going to just uh, flip it through this way. And so I'm using this as my inspiration, and I will show you the uh, paper that I'm going to pick out that was my main piece of paper. Okay, now, I, if you can get this. Uh, as a single sheet, you really, really need to do. That's a beautiful piece of paper. Beautiful piece of paper. And I showed this in a Kit Crunch video. Very, very fun. Okay, so this, of course, is the piece of paper that I am going to use as my main inspiration. It has foil. It's got that fairy tale look. It just reminds me of Cinderella. So that was my first piece of paper from this paper pad. And if this is too much talk, please know there is a fast forward button 
on every YouTube video. So just hit that fast forward button. Uh, you don't have to hear all the chit chat. Okay, it depends on the time, okay? And so sometimes with long videos, what I'll do is I'll watch 10 minutes here, watch 10 minutes there. Sometimes I don't have a, an hour to watch a video either. So I get that. Okay, so then uh, using this, uh, and since I'm using four by six photos, and they're basically just going to be a span uh, row of photos across the page. It's not going to be a hard design. I know I'm going to need a couple other pieces of paper. Now, I will tell you for a, a cardstock base, uh, what I would have done is I would have taken a couple of these pieces of paper that I'm not crazy about, like this one, and I would have just used the reverse of this as my cardstock base or my foundation page. But because this is a paper pad, these papers are not thick enough. So I will have to pour out some cardstock, okay? So that will be coming down, uh, down the pipe. Okay, so with this photo in mind, I'm going to uh, pick out some other papers. Okay, so as I was going through this paper pad, now I've looked at this paper pad so many times, I basically know what's in it. Okay, but I want to tell you what I was thinking as I was going through this paper pad, finding some other papers. Okay, I really want to emphasize on this pink or this coral, but this already has foil and I may add some foil. So this was not going to be an option. No, no. <laughs> okay, I really wanted to get some pink in, um, but we'll see. I don't think that's going to happen, but I'll show you some other things I considered. I had thought about this, okay? This definitely has that ribbon and sash and feel. Uh, you know, I'm all about mood and feel. However, see how this has this cream base right here? This is too much cream base for my page, so skip that one. Uh, I'll show you how I'm going to get the birds in because, you know, that was part of it. And I'm going to select this piece of paper for embellishments, okay? So I'm thinking of embellishments as well as pattern paper. So I have those two. Watch me knock off my bread bowl. Oh, that would not be, oh, no. I am not going to do that today, okay? And so then, what else? Uh, too much foil. Again, I considered this as a, I will not use this like this. I won't. However, there is a lot of color in here. So you could definitely pull out your punches and uh, use the color for your page. You could do that. Hmm. I think I may do that. You know why? Because I'm going to be pulling out some punches. So, uh, thank you. That was a good idea. Okay, so I'm going to move that to the side. And then this was the other piece of paper that I'm going to use uh, for my two-page layout. Okay? This has a little bit of everything. This has a little bit of everything. Just beautiful pieces of paper. Okay. Now, like I said, this isn't going to be a hard design. Okay? And I'm just looking at what else I could use. I had considered that for the bottom. Because basically, I'm going to do a happy horizontal. Okay. Now, uh, for embellishments, if you are someone who does not have gold washi, remember when you're looking at a paper pad, I'm probably getting there, you can use this right here as uh, washi uh, or like a border st uh, st strip. Okay. Or uh, as just a gold piece of paper. If you're not someone who has washi or you have gold, look at your paper pad. You don't have to keep this as a piece of 12 by 12. You could use this as a gold pattern paper, and this is a wood grain. So definitely don't look at just as a, as look at it as just a piece of paper. And then also too with Cinderella, you know that there was a lot of love, there was a lot of stitching, and there was a lot of sewing. So these stitched hearts, I think I'm going to incorporate as part of an embellishment as well. So that's just my thought process as I was going through this paper pad and considering my mood and feel, okay? And then of course I have this music note. I had entertained the thought of that as well. Hmm, and I may do that. Okay, if I don't use it as a piece of paper, there's embellishments. Now I go ahead and tear these piece of paper out because this is clunky and cumbersome. I pull it, put it away and I no longer have to deal with it, okay? But again, that's Maggie Holmes, Willow Lane. And of course, since we're talking about paper pads and our paper pad party, I will tell you this is more of affordable to get paper, but I will tell you the single sheets in this collection is a much better quality a much better color, a much better everything, uh, buying this in a single sheet, okay? It's going to also be heavier, okay? But I get 36 you know, for less than $15, you can't complain. But um, the colors are better in the single sheets. But then, of course, with single sheets, we all know that's 99 cents, <laughs> okay? So sometimes you have to determine, do you want the paper pad to get the whole collection, 
or do you want to get some single sheets and perhaps get a better piece of paper? Uh, the single sheets uh, in the American Crafts uh, papers are definitely prettier when they're on their own, but they're more expensive. So, you know, you get what you pay for. Okay, so there's all my photos. There's my papers. There are the, uh, that's the ideas. Here's my main paper. Okay, so uh, this is going to be main paper, and I go ahead and put my papers in order how I will use them. And these three here, uh, that's going to be embellishments. Okay, so that is my papers I have picked out for this two page. Okay, and so I now have my photos. Okay, and they're just simply going to go across my page, uh, not in this order, but they're going to go across the page, uh, and I'll replace this one here. And then there are two that I will cut down, and it will be this actual carriage I'm going to cut down, and this here. I don't need that in a 4 by 6 okay? I might just make a couple small photos. Uh, I really just want those little mice up there. <laughs> yes, okay, because it's all part of the story. Uh, so then, of course, I have my title. It's going to be In a Faraway Land. So let's talk about some embellishments and what did I do to get that, okay? And again, I'm just going to keep my one photo on top as my inspiration. Okay, it's easier to pick out embellishments and papers and color scheme with your focus on one photo, okay? Which would be your focal photo, photo, your favorite photo, the one that basically tells the story on its own. And of course, it's Cinderella in a faraway land. Okay, so of course, I pulled out my catalog binder. Can't say enough about this resource. I have a video linked below. And so then I will go through now, uh, and I will keep in consideration, I pulled this, okay, uh, for embellishment. So if I could find a heart punch, or I could fussy cut them, not in the mood for that today, uh, but if I could find a heart punch, so I know that I'm going to have to pick punch bag number two, and I make notes along the way. So I'm going to do punch bag number two. Okay, for the hearts. And then I know I'm gonna need a circle one for those flowers, okay? So, uh, yes, that's punch bag number one. Number one, number two. Okay, so then I'm going to go and look at some other things with this photo in mind. And this is just my process, okay? With that photo in mind of the beautiful uh, dress there. And what do you see? You see ribbon and sashes, and you're thinking of the birds, and you're thinking of fabric, and uh, definitely those bows, you know, in the ruffles. So that's what you're thinking about. Okay, and then also to the castle. So uh, I'm probably not going to pick any more punches, but I was looking at this catalog, and I was just leafing through, and I saw an edge punch that I thought would be very pretty for uh, this in a faraway land, and it was this one right here, okay? And so that's in my border punches. Just look at that. That's very, very pretty. So I'm going to put down that arch punch, and I will go get all of my punches at one time, and I put them on my desk, okay? And so then as I, I, okay, so I have one edge punch. There's no sense looking at all these other ones, and I'm not in the mood for embossing folders, which I need to break the habit of that. Uh, yeah, I need to start using them more. And then I thought, okay, well, I need a title. I do not feel like looking at my thickers because sometimes I have to break the habit of looking at them all the time. So I'm looking for a font in a quick manner that will give me that fairy tale look, okay? And if you have a silhouette library or a cricket cartridge, you may even have something that's considered fairy tale, okay? And so I have this one that is called Faith, and I thought this font right here, to me that looked like, uh, it reminded me of Shrek. <laughs> yes, once upon a time. So I will put slice number 12, okay? So easy, I'm just getting all my supplies picked out really, really quick, okay? So then of course I went right to my dies, okay? And so I know that I have something to do with birds and bows in my dies. And so I know to look for them and I'm just looking and I know they're on back here, okay? And anything that makes you think of fairy tale, Cinderella, castle, uh, flourishes, leaves, stems, all of that stuff's going to be pretty. Okay, there's a key. That would be f a fun embellishment. Number 30. Okay, so we're going to put that number 30, dies. Okay, and I'm just sitting here making a note on the left. Okay, now see, I could have picked out this. And a fair, you know, that would be pretty. Eh, oh. I'll break out this slice. I have some time today. Okay, and right there is what I had in mind, number 35. So you see I have these bows and I have these birds. That's definitely pretty. 
and I thought I had something that looked a little fairy tale ish. Oh, uh, yes, number 40, that would be good. I'm looking fairy tale, fairy tale. Okay. That's, see, there's a bigger bow. There's some bigger bow, uh, birds. Uh, yes, what, oh, now right there. Well, isn't that pretty? Now, I want to show you something. So, if you did not have a piece of paper, like this right here, of this Willow Lane, see the flowers and the flourishes for the fairy tale? This die right here, and I know a lot of us have something like this, that would take place of your pattern paper. Now, I could use this, but in conjunction with that, it, it would be competing. So if you don't have paper like that, look at what dies you have, look at what cuts you have. And so again, I'm just looking for anything fairy tale. Fairy tale, fairy tale. And so I may go back to uh, that one that I saw. Where was that? I think it was back here somewhere. Yeah, for some, those uh, little flourishes, number 40. Those look a little fun to me. So we'll see. I will pull them. That doesn't mean I have to use them, but they're on they're on my desk. Okay, so that is how I'm starting this layout, this two-page layout. Okay, and so even though it seems like it's a little bit of a work now, you know, when you're making your embellishments, it does take time. You do have to pull out a die. You do have to pull out an embossing folder. You do have to pull out a punch. You know, so that's, you know, that's what you have to uh, consider when you're not using pre-made embellishments. Um, the process takes a little bit longer. However, I'm not using a sketch. I'm not going to use a, an intricate design. So even though it takes a little bit of time now to think about and pull supplies, the actual two-page layout is going to go fast because it's, it's not going to be hard. Um, but you have a little bit of time involved if you're going to you know do your own title do your embellishments and be a little bit creative rather than just pulling out a pack of die cuts or enamel dots okay so that's sometimes you're in a hurry you pull out those pre-made items today i have a little bit of time and we're celebrating our 100th start to finish video so i wanted to you know just play a little bit more than normal so uh, what i will do now is that i will pause i'm gonna go make another cup of tea and then what i will do is i will pull out those uh, punches and those dies and that slice machine and i will go ahead and cut my title and then i will come back and we'll keep on working and i'll show you how i'm going to cut these papers and go from there okay so hold on we're going to keep playing with this load prompt disney page two pages and uh yes i'm uh, going to spend some time with uh little miss cinderella today and her little friends yes what were they called hmm interesting that might have to be a hidden giveaway okay hold on for that okay hold on Okay, so I am back. I'm going to show my progress of what I have been playing with in this Maggie Holmes Willow Lane paper pad. And yes, have I been playing? Absolutely. Okay, so what I did was I took uh, some of my slice uh, images and I took some dies and I took some punches and then also those papers from the paper pad and just been playing and making my own embellishments. And when I'm working on a two page like this and I have no embellishments to start with, I make them first and then I play around with them. And so you can see on the sheet here, that I have plenty of embellishments and all I did was use my punches and my slice machine and my dies. Yes, and I have plenty to play with, okay? And so, of course, I did more than I needed, but that's the beauty of when you're playing and creating embellishments. Make more than you need and then you have them for the next page. So what I did was I took this piece of paper from the Maggie Holmes paper pad and I just took a circle punch and this was about a one and a half pop circle punch and I just punched those and I will tell you I really like how they look punched. I'm not crazy about them on this paper but when you punch them I mean they make very pretty embellishments. They really do. I really like that. Okay, so then what I did was, uh, I can move that to the side, is that I took this stitched Maggie Holmes paper, and then I took a heart punch, and then I created all of these, and all I did was use a heart punch that was about the same size. Now, you'll see that it's not a perfect image, but that works okay because it's just a whimsical stitched heart, that type of thing. Okay, now I have every different color. Uh, that was on that. Okay, and I just took a couple rows. I didn't do the whole sheet. 
I just did a couple rows. Okay. So then the last thing I played with, uh, well, no, I have another thing. Okay. So then I took those cut aparts. And remember I had said earlier that when you have cut aparts, maybe you don't even think of, them as, uh, think of them as cut aparts. Think of them as pattern paper. So I basically looked at that as scraps. And so then I took some dyes and I did some flowers here. And then I took this blue and I did some birds. Cause you know, I think of blue birds, uh, for Cinderella. And then, of course, there's some that's left over. And then I took some of those uh, flourish pieces and cut it from that. And what else? Oh, and then these bows. I mean, just very, very pretty. So, again, I just took these cut aparts and used the colors for embellishments. Okay. Loved how that turned out. And then what else did I do? Oh, then I used this piece of paper from the cut apart. I used that metallic to cut out my title and some more of those golden arches. I did that. And then I used the wood grain for a big banner. Okay. So I really played with the paper in that paper pad. Okay. And so you can see there, I have some washi have an idea for that. There are those golden arches turned out very, very pretty. And then there is my title called In a Faraway Land. <laughs> really like that. Now I did play with this music sheet paper and I took this arch trellis type of punch from Martha Stewart and I punched one and I'll show you what it looks like. And I love the paper, but when I punched it out, it's okay. You don't really get to see that it's music notes. So I'm not sure if I'll use it, but I have it. I didn't do two because I wasn't a, a fan of that. But I really like this. I thought maybe I would get out another punch. Or uh, you know what I'll do. I'll just do this right now. I will punch a Mickey head. Oh, yes. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to punch some Mickey heads. Okay. And just so I can get some music notes represented on that Mickey head. Now, here's the best thing. I don't have to use these on every, you know, I have to use all these on, on one page. But I'm going to have some musical Mickey heads ready to go. I'm going to have couple more. I'm just punching them where I can see that you can tell that it's music notes. Okay, that's all I'm doing. Okay, oh, I think I can get one more. Oh, maybe squeeze one in, you know, trying. Maybe not. Okay, but then that one, that's pretty cute too, just with those gold bars. Okay, so there, I just made some more embellishments with that sheet. Okay, fun, fun. Okay, so then I punched out. I really didn't, it didn't turn out what I thought it would in my brain. So what I did was I took some more washi tape because whenever I see this motif, this Florida de lis it reminds me of, of course, Cinderella, fairy tales, that type of thing. And I learned something. I honestly just thought this was basically a French motif. I did not know the Florida de lis was basically about like an iris or a lily flower. I did not know that. I thought it was just like a architectural design. I did not know. Of course, I did look this up. And so I guess uh, Flor de Lee, the floor part means flower in French, but I wouldn't know that because I don't know French, but I simply thought this was just an architectural design, but it really has to do something with a lily or an, a European, um, a European lily or a what is that? A French uh, lily, something like that. I didn't know that. Interesting, interesting. And so what I did for this washi is that I just took a piece of scrap and I had that laying here. Oh, that's the reverse of this white. And I just took this washi, put it on a piece of scrap white, 12 inches. And I think I will use that for a border strip on my page. Okay. So there is my title. There is all kinds of embellishments to play with. So now I can get on to making my page. So if you want to hang on, I'll just put this to the side and we can start playing. So now I'm down to two pieces of paper. <laughs> so you see, when I took them out of the paper pad, I took all the ones that I thought I wanted to play with and I ripped them out of the pad all at once. And because they were all laying there and I already had punches and dies, and of course, you know, you just start playing with them. So that's what I say. Even if you rip out more than you need, it doesn't matter. Okay, so what I think I'm planning to do is that I'm going to, of course, do two pages. We'll squeeze this in. We're just going to keep on scrapbooking. Okay. And so I'm going to take the top of this piece, which is very, very pretty. And I'm thinking this is the main piece. Yes. Okay. And I'm going to put this over here on the left. Okay. And I'm just going to do a happy horizontal. Well, or half of a horizontal. Because I'll show you with my photos. So then what I'm going to do is then use this 
this on the right. Now, I definitely could use this on the right, but then it would look too similar. But that's a great way to stretch a piece of paper. But I really like this. I want this kind of a be like a showcase. So I'm going to trim that in six inches. And then that's what I'm going to do. Just to, uh, you know, give me more pattern. Okay. Because really, uh, after I cut these paper, and I'm just cutting them in about six inches, uh, my design's going to go so quick. I'm just going to get busy playing with those embellishments that I just punched and die cut and used my slice, slice machine. Now, when you rip papers from a paper pad, and of course you take these uh, toppers off, sometimes you get that perforated edge. And I am going to trim that off slightly because I don't want that. Okay, so I'm just trimming that off. And then, of course, I'm going to cut six inches, and I'm left-handed, so I do use my trimmer upside down. But then I, uh, some people told me that this is how they use their trimmer, and they're not left-handed. So isn't that amazing how you get to use, you get used to using something in a certain manner? Okay. So, of course, I have such a stockpile of Kleenexes. It's a wonder I can find anything. I'll just show you. Full disclosure, look at all these Kleenexes. Yeah, you can tell it's allergy season. Oh my goodness, yeah. Always reaching for Kleenexes. Okay, so I have these left over. I will just keep those because I'm going to put this here on the left, put this here on the right, okay? It's the same colors, but just a little bit of a different design because I want a little bit difference. I don't want everything matchy-matchy. And I'm simply going to take my photos and I'm going to span them. Okay, I'm going to span them across. Okay, and I'm thinking this is how I'm going to do this. So I have a castle. If you see this, I hope I get it on frame. So you see what I did was I took a dress here and have a dress over there. I have a picture of a castle here. I have a picture of, of a castle here. Right here is the fairy godmother. Here's Cinderella. And of course I put the fairy godmother here on the left because she's looking to the right. That's just a little trick we learned way back in the day. Have people facing inward, not outward. Okay, and so I really, really like this. Okay, now the only thing is, is that... I really like these in four by six sides, size. I can just butt them up. The only thing is, is that I have a camera lens right there, okay? And I'm not going to stick an embellishment there. So I think I'm just going to leave it as it is. That's all I'm going to do because I really don't want to trim it down, okay? So we're just going to forget that imperfection there. And then I'm going to trim this down, this carriage, and then I'm going to trim this down. Okay, so I think, I'm not quite sure where they're going to go, okay? And so I could definitely bring this down. And uh, definitely, oh, I really could do that, okay? And then bring that hole down to the bottom, okay? Because I had thought what I would do is just bring these up, and then I would have a piece of paper, or I would you know, put an extra little piece of paper down here at the bottom, or I would leave it blank because this is so busy, or I could definitely play with my washi and also to uh, these border stickers I made out of washi. Okay, so I have this washi here. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay, because I wanted to use that Martha Stewart edge punch, and I really liked how that maybe I could find another I really like that image because it reminds me of the castle. So I may still play with that, but I have this to go with, okay? Because I do like taking the seams where my paper meets my photo and laying something there, okay? Could definitely do that, okay? Uh, so then what else do I have? Basically, that's going to be my design other than my title, okay? So, of course, there's my photos, and then I'll decide how far they're going to come down, okay? Okay. And then, uh, let's see, I got my seams figured out. Let's play with the title. Okay, so the title, of course, is going to say, In a Faraway Land. I really, really like that. Okay, so when I was doing some cutting, I found this on my slice machine. And, it, you know, of course, it looks like a castle banner. So I think I may anchor some of my title off of this. Okay, now it's not going to all fit in there. Okay, so it would just serve as a little bit of a title base. Okay, my whole title is not going to fit in that, and that's okay. Uh, it's enough to show you where the title is going to be. I might move that up a little bit. Okay, so in a faraway land, 
it was fun playing with my slice, slice machine. And of course, with my slice machine, I have to cut each one of those one at a time. But I will tell you, it didn't take as long as you think it would. Okay, so I may do that. And of course, you know, I could put some enamel dots down there uh, to separate that and make that look, uh, you know, as a bigger. Or I could go and take and cut another one and have two banners side by side to see if that makes the title stand out a little bit more. So in this stage, I'm just playing and seeing what I like to come, you know, see what's coming up what I'm coming up with. Okay, so I have these pieces, and then of course I start with my bigger pieces and I work my way down. Okay, so I have these to play with. And of course, since I have so much gold here, I will definitely take one of these and put them on the left, or on the right page. So of course I'm going to have to leave a little bit of room for my journaling, which that's gonna go over on the right, and you basically see my page is done, other than playing with a little bit of embellishments. Okay, and it's really, uh, taking these birds. <laughs> yes, look at the birds. And then I had these little flowers. And some of these I will pop dot with foam tape. So might as well get that out and play with that. Okay. And then I have these, uh, what do we want to call them? Um, flourishes. And I could use those as photo anchors uh, right there on those two I could put one here on the left, and I could put one over here on the right, and then that would serve as a photo anchor. I could definitely do that. I really like that. Really like that. Or I could, you know, do one here and one there. That looks pretty, too. I only have three, so I would just die cut another one. That's really pretty. I think I will do that. Just a little extra touch there, okay? And then, of course, my journaling is going to go over there. But I think I will have to cut another one of those banners. Uh, I think that may show up a little bit in a faraway land, absolutely. Again, I'm just going to play with these bows, okay? And I'm going to play with these hearts and uh, just sprinkle them around. And like I said, I made more than I needed. But why not? Because I'll just put them in my embellishment drawers and have them to play with down the road. Now, the last thing I need to decide, because this is done, I just now need to start adhering. <laughs> That's all that is, is that I need to cut these down. So let's get my trimmer. And I need to figure out where they're going to go if they do go. Okay, so I'm going to trim this down. And I'm going to trim it to what, uh, what I want in this photo. And so I took that and made it a little bit. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to cut much more from that. So that is basically a three and a half by four. Okay, so I'm going to keep that in mind. I'm going to trim this down a tad. And I'm going to make this three and a half by four. Okay, and so I do that just so that I know the two photos I have match. But that doesn't mean I can't cut them down more. Okay because all my other photos are the same size. Well, no, that's not right, is it? No. Oh. oh yeah, I got the three and a half by four going in their opposite direction, so I'm gonna have to cut this down. Okay, so we're gonna cut this down. Three and a half. Okay, so now we got three and a half by three and a half. Well, I can wing that. I can wing that. We'll just cut off some of that stone. Okay, so now I have two three and a half by three and a half photos. And I think what I will do is that I will take a piece of scrap paper and I know exactly what it's going to be. It's going to be this piece of paper here and I'm going to mat these two photos in this right here after I cut out an additional banner piece. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those two photos and I'm going to put them over here on the right because I want these two photos, okay? They may not be that great for design, doesn't matter. It's whether you want the story or the design to take center stage. And of course, for a lot of us, it's going to be, and I'm probably gonna overlap that. Because, oh my goodness, wouldn't that be so fun? There's the mice and there's the carriage all night, right beside each other. <laughs> very, very fun. And I'm going to cattywampus them and make that a little whimsical because everything's so linear at this point, but I'm just going to mat them so they'll stand out a little bit more, okay? So that is the beginning of the left, the beginning of the right, and I'm just gonna keep on playing. But honestly, that is just my process. I had more time spent doing these embellishments 
because I don't have any fairy tale type of embellishment, so I had to make them. And so that's why I broke out a paper pad because in that paper pad, you can see I had not only my pattern paper choices, but then I also, I got my title and then I'm going to have my title bases and then there's more embellishments. And then I even broke, <coughs> excuse me, I even broke out these papers for embellishments and more embellishments and even more embellishments so that's the beauty of a paper pad okay and then don't forget i took those cut aparts to make additional embellishments because of all the paper or all the colors that was that was represented in my main paper those were all represented in the cut aparts and that's how you can get embellishments uh, using a paper pad so i wanted to show that process so i will come back uh, with a finished page Playing with his Maggie Holmes Will Alone Will Elaine in a fair in a faraway land. Very, very fun. But before I do that, I have a hidden giveaway. Yes, I do. Do you want to see what it is? Now, I'm working on a Disney page, so of course I had to do something that was Disney related. <laughs> yes, okay. Okay, so what I have up for a hidden giveaway today is of course some Disney related items. And so I have some dimensional stickers here uh, of Tinkerbell, just about as cute as can be. And then of course I have some Alice in Wonderland, and I am in love with this actual chain on that pocket watch. Too, too fun. I picked up a set of these myself. So excited to play with them. And then also, too, some more Disney dimensional stickers. Of course, there's Mickey on there. And then, of course, it wouldn't be Disney without the magic of a unicorn and fairy tale. And then also, too, a Chamel 6x6 Starshine paper pad. I love using this collection by Chamel, which is popping up a Tuesday morning right now uh, for Disney pages. Very, very fun to do. And then I also have a... Uh, alphabet stamp set of course it looks like fairy tale and this is by kelly creates and it's called bouncy lettering so uh yes i think it's very fairy tale like so of course these six items will be in the hidden giveaway so all you simply have to do is leave a comment and the word disney has to be somewhere in your comment it doesn't matter how you list it or how you say it and of course because of postage this is for usa only you have to be over eight 18 and a subscriber all that good stuff that's normal for a hidden giveaway and uh, in a week or so uh, I will pick a uh, random winner from the comments that have Disney in there and then also I will get this sent out to you so again uh, must be 18 uh, over be a subscriber USA only and the word Disney needs to appear I mean just look at that beautiful fun stuff and of course you know you never can go wrong with starshine really really like that and then of course some stamps to play with absolutely and of course you know I think I probably will put some Mickey heads in there too for you to play with why not absolutely okay so that's the hidden giveaway yes so come back and we'll keep playing with uh, either my finished page or I'll show you what I'm in the progress of okay so hold on okay so now it's time to start playing with some embellishments and you can see that all my embellishments now are on one great big pile because I had to move everything because of my contractor needing access to my desk. Oh, my great gravy. You know, and I have to be honest with you. Sometimes I wonder what other people think when they walk into our spaces and they see nothing but paper and books and photos and tools and you have to wonder what they think of us at times, but it doesn't matter. It's for our family, not for them. Absolutely. Okay. So what I did was I took my, basically my six by 12 piece of paper. I started at the top and I worked my way down. And so wherever the paper ended, I just put my photos in a, a horizontal fashion, right straight across. Did not do any cutting or anything, but I will tell you that these photos, even they were four by six, they came from two different online processors. They didn't measure four by six. Unbelievable how that happens. And so then down here at the bottom, I took one of these arch punches. I love this. It's by Martha Stewart. To my, it reminded me of the castle work right here behind the fairy godmother. And I just used this music paper and I, I punched that and you can see I already have my next page ready to go right here at the bottom so love how that worked I did get that in I was so excited and then of course I took some of that fleur de lis uh, washi and I put it over some white car sock and I added that as well so now it's time to play with some embellishments and I'm not going to hear anything down it's just that I'm playing with some and of course now I'm going to have to rework this whole pile <laughs> 
you know, because my contractor needed into my room. So, of course, I'm not sure where all of these are going to go, but I need to get them in in a pile by category or else my brain just will not think this way. It just won't. And, you know, I had this laid out. I think I knew what I wanted, but, you know, household duties come before scrapbooking. Uh, you know, and I saw I'm doing is just putting these in pile because I want to play with my title here. I want to get my title somewhat figured out. Now, this is just the left page. I haven't adhered anything to the right page, and this is what I do in a two-page process because I do not have the desk space uh, for a 12 by 24 landscape. And one time I did until I started getting some lights and camera stuff and boom arm arm booms and all that kind of stuff you know you just don't have room for that so i basically work on one page and then uh once i i don't completely finish the left till i go to my right but i have a good idea um because this is my main piece of paper you know my main side of my two page layout of course and i'm just putting this together by um uh, you know getting this somewhat in order uh so i can continue working on this page and i'm just putting my flowers with my flowers if you can even see when, what I'm doing, but that's all I'm doing because I want to work on my title. So what I did was, and I have these embellishments, these little um, corner pieces, flourishes. And I just saw some gals hauling uh, some dyes, spellbinders dyes, with basically the same type of flourish. What did they call them? Corner pieces. That's what they called them. Of course, I'm going to get all those bluebirds. Okay. And I'm telling you what, I'm going to move this page just for a minute. Okay, now, mind you, I have two banner pieces here. Okay, and so look at all of these embellishments. And let me tell you something. Guess what? I They all came from the paper pad. Because as I sat down to work on this page, I didn't have a single pre-made uh, packaged of anything. Okay, so I cut the banners that came from Maggie Holmes. These gold um, floral um, arches. Um, I think there's another word for that, uh, or a wreath, whatever you want to call that. All of these embellishments came from the paper pad. I mean, and sometimes we overlook that because we get into that mindset. It's just paper. Okay. I know I do, but sometimes when you think, Hmm, that's also embellishments, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so I'm definitely happy that I took the time and made my own embellishments. Okay. Now I think I'm going to have to make another one of those. That was the plan, okay? And so then, right there, I used that cut-apart for that. I mean, great way to use these cut-aparts because I get a little tired of them very quickly. Even made some Mickey heads, okay? So uh, what I wanted to show was I wanted to do my title on one of these banner pieces. And one's not going to be enough, so I cut two. Now, on the bottom of these banner pieces, you can see they have three little um, hanging for, you know, where the ribbon and things, tassels would be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlap them just like this, and I'm going to make that look like one big banner piece, and so then I would have five points down here at the banner. Why would I do that? It will just look a little bit more pleasing uh, with five rather than six. Okay, and I'll just show you that. There's six. Okay. Now, look, when I uh, overlap that, and that's all I'm going to do is overlap that, this looks a little bit more pleasing because your eye can always find the center easily with an odd number versus a five. So what my plan is, is that I'm going to spell out in a faraway land, okay? And sometimes I will work this way, uh, and I have to show you something. Where's my slice? I'm telling you what, I had to move everything off my desk. Oh, well, you know, you got to help these guys out. <laughs> they need all the help they can get. Sometimes if I don't know which way the, the letters are supposed to do, I have to get out my dies, or in this case, my slice card, and I'm looking at the eye. Which way did that go? Oh, that doesn't look the same, does it? That's funny, funny, funny. Okay, in a faraway land. Hmm. Well, I don't know. Maybe that's my L. No, there's my L. Hmm, that looks a little different than that right there. But that's what it is. That's the L. Okay, so I'm going to just play with this in a faraway land. Okay? Oh, you probably didn't see what I'm doing. And I'm just, I'm just talking and playing. <laughs> yeah, that's all I'm doing. Now, where's my D? Oh, my goodness. This is a Y. Oh, am I missing something? Oh, great gravy. 
See what happens when you have to move things. Okay, now how did this W go? Okay, there's the W. Okay. So I'm hoping that I can space this in a faraway land on top of this banner. And I still don't think it's going to be enough room. But it's okay. If I just have the word faraway land, I can somehow get that together. Okay. Because I didn't want to use that six. I may have to. Oh, well, we'll figure it out. Okay. I'm going to get my faraway. I mean, I'm just all over the board here. But I lost a D. Now, see, that makes me upset. Oh, man. Oh, this is what happens if you don't have a certain tray for everything. Maybe it's on maybe it's on my uh, pages. No, it's not there. It's not there. It's not there. Oh. Well, I will find my D. Okay. And you're probably looking at it, and I don't even see it. Okay. I had to cut so many A's and R's in a far away land. Okay, so if I wasn't missing a D in a far away land, I really like how that looks. Now, because far away is kind of a big word, I'm going to have to ex extend, expand that to six. I really didn't want to, but we'll figure it out. But I have other embellishments, and that was my point before I went down that rabbit hole of missing my D and looking for my D. But I'll find it somewhere. Okay. So there's another one of those. So my plan is to work on my title and then maybe have a little bit of, if there's a bow, or maybe I could do a banner or a sash or something with these birdies, you know, because that's what I think about, okay, when I think of Cinderella and the birdies, it, it will de determine, be determined how this title is going to land on here. And sometimes when you are playing with embellishments and titles, we all know, Sometimes it's simply just plain, okay, in a faraway land. And, you know, maybe I could come there and do that bow like that. Or maybe I could even showcase a Mickey head. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Or I could simply just take enamel dots. And, or I have these little flowers. I could play that. I could put these little flowers there. Oh, uh, that would be cute. You know, I could alternate these flowers because I did. I just cut those from the cut aparts. Okay, I'm just rambling and playing at this part uh, at this point, but I'm having fun. I'm distracted because I lost my D. I'm going to have to find it. Okay, now I wanted to say when you're cutting out these titles, okay, what I always do is that I will use a scrap piece of paper because here was my eye originally, okay, and this is what I ended up with. So you can see a big difference because sometimes I don't know how to gauge some of these letters. See, that was the F I was going to use on the left, and that's the one I ended up with, okay? Because sometimes I can't gauge what a one inch or a two inch will be for my title. So I will do something on a piece of scrap piece of paper, and then I'll know. Oh, yes, that'll work. No, that won't work. Okay. So I will just start playing. I'm putting my title up here. I'm going to play with some of these little uh, corner pieces or these flourishes. I'm going to put them here. Now, I did have the intention of putting one of these gold arches over here, but because there's already these gold arches already on the paper, it will compete. So that's going to go on the right. So I already determined that. I have some dead space down here at the Fairy Godmother, so I absolutely could build you know, a cluster of something very pretty down here. And of course, I love this bow. I love one of those circle shapes. What else do I have? Oh, I have a birdie. That would be fun. And maybe uh, I could come up with, find a word sticker or something. But I like that little embellishment right there. And why that looks good down there is because, of course, there's dead space. You know, it's just pavement. But then it brings all these colors here down to here. So I'm going to play with that. What else do I have? Oh, I have a couple of those little flowers. Maybe play with that. Okay, come up with something. So I'm going to play with a little cluster there. Okay, so then after that is planned, not adhered, and then what I'll do is I'll go to my next page, which is already here, and it's in the beginnings. Okay, so I will just take my 6 by 12 okay, and I'll just adhere that. I will start at the top, and then I'm going to adhere these photos right down here, or up there just a tad, okay? I'll match it up to the left. That's the order they will go in. I will trim this off, this edge punch, and I'll put that at the bottom. I'll put my washi here, and that is how quick the page comes together. It's just fun playing with the embellishments. And of course, I'm going to, I'm going to mat these, okay? I'm gonna mat those and overlap those, 
Okay, poet didn't know it. I'm going to play with a little bit of an embellishment. And of course, I'm going to get one of those in. Okay, or maybe what I could do is I could definitely uh, put two of those together. Give a little bit of a shadow effect. That might give me a little bit more substantial weight over there. Okay, so I may do that. And then uh, my journaling is only going to be a couple lines, so I will probably plan for my journaling to go up there. Very, very quick, very, very fun, uh, but definitely. I mean, I'm just in love with how many embellishments I got, and that was all from the paper pad, all from the paper pad. I'm not using anything other than washi. I mean, isn't that fun? Absolutely. Okay, so I will adhere and work on this title, and I will definitely come back with a finished page in a faraway land once I find my D. Oh, yes, maybe my contractor needed it. <laughs> yeah, what if he needed a gold D somewhere? Yeah. Uh, wouldn't it be funny if I found it in my billing? Okay. So i got to find my D. Okay, well, I guess I'll be looking. Okay, that was just a little check-in, uh, you know, from the uh, yesterday to today. Now, when I work on a page, it doesn't always happen in one sitting. It just actually it probably never happens in one sitting because we have life going on in between while we're scrapbooking. Okay, so I will come back with a finished page and uh, we'll see where all these lovely, lovely embellishments landed. Love these bows. Yes, okay. Oh, maybe that would be good at the end of that word with a bow. Oh, that's cute. Oh, maybe I could put a bird on top of there. You see how I just play? Absolutely. That's what this is all about, just playing. Okay, I will be back. Okay, I am finally back with my finished two-page spread. Love how it turned out because I got to play with some fairy tale type of embellishments and some beautiful, pretty colors and, you know, a two-page uh, layout of Disney that never gets old. No. So if you will see at my, uh, my left page here and my right page, it is basically the same thing on the left versus what is on the right. It's just I have two additional photos up at the top. And basically all this is is a very, very simple design because it's only half of a happy horizontal. I have a 6 by 12 up here with three photos and a horizontal band. And again, rinse and repeat. 6 by 12 and then three photos again in a horizontal band. So uh, when you're doing something of this nature, when you are playing and making your own embellishments, which is what I did in this case, you know, you break out the punches and the stamps and the dies and your electric cutters and things like that. Sometimes you have to make a quick design because the time that you have for your layout is your embellishments. And that's what I did. I spent more time making my embellishments and made a very easy design. Of course, I had six four by six photos, I wanted to keep them that size. So when you're doing that, running them simply across in a horizontal band, left and right, is the easiest design you're ever gonna do uh, because I didn't wanna cut those down, okay? And then I had two extra that I wanted to use. I just could not bear not using them, so I cut them down three and a half by three and a half, put them on a mat, and stuck them right there at the top, okay? So then all I did then to separate the paper and the photos was use our beautiful washi. Now, if you look here on this left page, the gold washi, the gold glitter washi, is just over top of the paper, okay? And then the Florida de lis my European lily, <laughs> yes, is put on a piece of white cardstock and then ran across uh, the top of the photos, okay? And so I do that because I like where my photos and my paper meets. I like to cover up that seam, okay? And the same way down here at the bottom, I took that Martha Stewart arch punch and I just used that gold foil, uh, that pink gold foil paper that, that was in Maggie Holmes. And I'll show that in just a minute. And I just punched that out. And then you know how when you punch something out and you get this extra piece on the top that separates from your cut piece. I use that a lot of times and I did that in this case where I took that extra piece that came from the edge punch and I layered it on top of my punched piece, okay? So this is right here. And then I took that scrap that comes left over, I just put it right on top of that. And I, you'll see it in the close-ups. And I do that all the time. It gives just a little bit more dimension because this is so top heavy. I just wanted to have more of a grinding base than just one piece of paper. And then over here on the left, same thing with the washi, same down here. Out. So I finished them, you know, down here at the bottom, I use that same edge punch. So it's basically the same page on the left and the right. Okay, so now let's talk about the embellishments for a minute because all of my embellishments, except for enamel dots, and of course, 
uh, washi. But I'm telling you what, I am in love with washi for the last couple years. I don't even consider this an embellishment anymore. I think we should just have a separate category <laughs> for washi because I see it as, well, pattern paper, as ribbon. It's just a little bit of everything. And then a couple word stickers. And that's it. Everything else came from this Maggie Holmes Willow Lane paper pad. Very, very nice paper pad. Yes. Now, everything... Um, and I would have loved if my background papers, you know, my cardstock base, if that could have came from the Willow Lane paper pad, but the paper's too thin. And things do get a little heavy once you start adding photos and embellishments, things like that. Excuse me, I have to get a drink. Or have to sneeze. Oh, man, getting a drink and sneezing? That wouldn't work. No, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, so uh, what was I saying? Oh, the embellishments. So what I did for my title was that, and I hope I'm not getting too much of a glare. I've had to change things again because I was doing some cleaning. And I'll be talking about that in a mixer coming up. Okay, come on. I got distracted. Okay, my title. It came from this piece of paper, and I just used my slice machine. Cut out my font, okay? And then, of course, the uh, cluster, uh, the base for my title was from that same piece of paper. And then I even got additional embellishments. So I really gave that piece of paper a run for its money, okay? And you can see there's my title. And I'll have some close-ups at the end, okay? Now, I will talk about this title for a minute. And, um, and then I'll just go to the right page. Why don't we? Okay, so there's my title and uh, that um, title base, which is all from the same piece of paper with some bows, with some birds. And I did add the birds with a little bit of foam tape, give it a little bit of dimension to make it look like they're actually flying with this ribbon sash because that's what I visualize when I think of Cinderella. It's this right here. And so this is, the ribbon tails are knotted here down because I want a little bit of movement. And if you want to see at the end of the video, I'll show a quick little way how I did uh, this white ribbon here is all one piece, okay? And you can do that without bulk, okay? And then of course, added some enamel dots just to um, emphasize those points on that banner. And I used those corner flourishes right there. And down here, I just took the same embellishments. I had some banner that I had cut again from that music paper. I really want to talk about that music paper. And then I punched those circles with the flowers, the bird again on some foam tape, and layered a couple flowers with the enamel dot. Very, very easy. Okay? And very, very fun. I just can't believe how many embellishments I got from that paper pad. Okay? I didn't even intend for that when I was uh, starting this page, which is fun. Again, same thing. There's the corner flourishes. And then down here, I took that extra banner piece with one of those stitch tarts and the same flower thing. So now up here... I did not intend for this to turn out the way it did, but I really like how it did. And remember what I said in one of the segments, that when I was punching out these Mickey heads and these circles and these stitched hearts, which I only ended up using one of them, and these flowers, I said I punched, oh, and the birds. I said that I had punched way more than I needed. And I, this is a test to why, uh, this is a testimony as to why that's good, because I made this up here. And I made this in such a quick, easy, fast manner because I had all these pieces here and I could just play. Because this was an extra piece I had cut I didn't mean to. And um, because I went to go get an another one of these, well, I accidentally picked up the wrong flourish side size. And so I just put it there. And so then this ended up being a really nice fairy tale looking piece with these gold arches. And then this piece I didn't even plan for. And again, just playing with these pieces I had to the right. Very, very fun just to do that. So this, I want to talk about this gold music paper. Okay. And then I'll talk about my leftovers because I did get that question. Okay. So this gold music paper. Okay. Just a very, very pretty piece of paper. I want to show you how many places this landed on this two-page layout. Okay, and I'm talking about this paper right here. Okay, so it landed. Okay, okay, where is it over here? It's here, half of a banner shape here, which I came from a slice machine. My Martha Stewart edge punch, and then the extra piece. So that is where that landed. And then, of course, I have a hidden Mickey. And so I had punched out hidden Mickeys with that. Okay, so then on the right... I have, where is it again? It is here for a mat, 
and it's down here for that edge punch, that extra piece, and then a banner piece. All because of this. And look how much I still have left over. I used it for edging. I used it for dimension. I used it for matting. I used it for embellishments. And I still have these Mickey heads left over too. Just how fun. Oh, and I even have this piece left over too. Very, very fun how you can stretch a piece of paper. Yes. Now, of course, you know, I did take my quick dry and I um, adhered everything down. So I do the bend test. Everything's on there. Okay. And then what else that I wanted to show? Okay. Leftovers. So what will I do with all these leftovers? Okay. What I'm going to do, I think, is that I might, uh, with these leftovers here, I'm going to probably cut these out or cut these out, uh, you know, cut them down and all these other pieces, what I can salvage, I'll put it that way, what I can salvage, and I'm going to make myself a fairy tale embellishment pack. So the next time I want to work on a Disney page or fairy tale or anything from when my little one was little, I will have like a fairy tale and ephemera pack already ready to go. And there will be something coming up on, on the channel over the summer about ephemera pack. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, that'll be fun. So all these pieces I'm going to uh, either punch or cut apart and that type of thing and put and make my own embellishment um, fairy tale pack because this is already done. Okay. So why not? Now these bigger pieces are simply, and again with this, I'm going to take that one and a half punch and I'm simply going to do that with every one of these. I don't care for this flower paper, but I really, really like those. And then also this would make nice for cards when this is already done. So, but these bigger pieces, they are going to just go in my scrap pile. They will not go back in the paper pad. Okay. So even with leftovers, uh, I didn't have any leftover photos. But my leftover pieces, my embellishments, I'm going to make up a, a fairy tale embellishment pack. Uh, some of these will be cut apart, some of this will be trashed, and some will go in scrap. So with leftovers, it doesn't have to be a one for all. You don't have to just put all this in a page protector and throw it inside that paper pad, and then you have to deal with it later. No, I deal with it now. Okay. And so again, same with all those other papers. So that is basically how this turned out really, really enjoyed. Uh, spending time looking at my slice machine and I will tell you this is a tool that I have and this would be no different than your Cricut uh, your dies your stamps your embossing folders we tend to overlook what we truly have especially for stamps I have so many stamps I wouldn't even yeah there's just so many icons and things I have that I don't even play with but my slice machine is one of those things there are so many icons especially on this one here uh, I use the Faith one for my font. And then I use the one called Vintage Findings. And there is so, I mean, just look at that. There is so many motifs on the back of that. You could do so many things with that. And I just, I really overlook this, okay? Um, but then this is where a spending freeze has been good for me. I'm focusing on what I have, not what I want. And then also, too, on a spending freeze, I'm realizing uh, that I need less. I don't need more in my space. I can absolutely get away with less. And this two-page layout is an example. This is a beautiful two-page spread. And what do I have? Really, in essence, I just have a 12 by 12 piece of paper. Here's a 6 by 12, a 6 by 12, a couple of strips of washi, and a little piece of a... You could even use a border sticker down here for that. And then all these embellishments I could have made from scraps or the paper pad. It's just... Mm, it's an eye-opener, isn't it? So that is my two-page spread. But if you want to hang on for one more minute, I will show you this ribbon. Uh, I really like how that turned out. I really... This is mood and feel. Okay. Now, oh, what I wanted to say, too, is that you can can see that my title and my embellishment is my main part of my uh, page and that's okay because everything else you know um, my photos take up a lot of that landscape I didn't need much I let the paper do the work for me and this piece of paper from Willow Lane this piece of floral here this really was the inspiration and the starting and my mood and feel for this fairy tale page. Of course, it's Cinderella. We all know how easy that is to do. But for this ribbon banner here, I wanted to show quickly that I just used simply one piece of paper, or one piece of paper, one piece of ribbon. And so what I did was I took score tape and I put score tape to my title base. And then I put my ribbon on top of that score tape, just like that. Okay. And then what I did is I folded that over. Okay. And then I would take my scissors and I would trim right here. Okay. And I would fold that over. So basically what I did is I put the, um, 
the uh, I'm not going to say the ugly, the back side of the ribbon down so that when I folded it, my tails would be the pretty part of the ribbon. Okay, does that make sense? And all I did was fold it. That's all I did was fold it down. And I did secure that fold with a little piece of score tape. And I will say this a million times. When you're dealing with ribbon, you need score tape, not red line, score tape. Score tape is where it's at. And I will have the link below for score tape. It just... I wish I would have knew that from the very beginning because in my albums I have ribbon on many pages and it's cattywampus. So someday I will have to fix that down the road. But again, this uh, ribbon tail here underneath these bows, that is simply one piece of paper. My score tape's behind there. Folded it over and you don't even see the fold because my bow is over top of that fold. So my tails, that's the pretty side of the ribbon. Back here. That's the back side. And you're not really going to notice that because you're going to notice the tails. Okay, I just wanted to share that quick little tip on that. Uh, and so that is my two-page in a fair in a faraway land. Again, my uh, journaling is going to go here. Love how this page turned out. And again, it didn't take very long, but I certainly did play uh, with creating my own embellishments. That was really, really fun. Can't wait to show this to my little one. Yes, absolutely. So that is all I have for today. This is a long video, but this is exactly what some of my subscribers asked for. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you scrapbooked right along with me. And during the summer, I will try to do a little bit more showing my process. The only reason I don't show the middle process is because I scrap 10 minutes here, 12 minutes here, and I don't want to keep um, breaking back and forth, you know, with segments. But um, that is the fun part of scrapbooking when you can't, <laughs> yeah, stealing those 10 minutes here and there. 15 minutes in your scrap room can make a huge difference, whether you're organizing or you're cleaning or you're um, even just sitting down planning a page. 15 minutes, uh, that's how I think a lot of us scrapbook in those 15 minutes chunk. Okay, so that is all I have for today. Enjoy today, enjoy the holiday coming up, and then, uh, yes, come back to RTS because you never know what we're gonna do. Bye.